All right. Thanks, Brandon. So quick, quick, it's a very quick, simple case, but there's a lot of, I think, technical nuance with some of these cases. So I want to discuss all that. But the first thing I'd like to do is focus in on the wrist, and I'll show you guys where we are so far. Let me know when you can see the wrist. Can you guys see it? Yes. All right. So as, as uh, we did in the previous case, the first thing we did was access with uh, ultrasound guidance. This is a, uh, a, six, a five, six slender sheath because we were planning on using a guide catheter. So this gives us that option. We could also use a diagnostic. Uh, the other thing we used was this, uh, this is the Lumify iPad. Uh, this is our portable ultrasound. We can take this with the, to the office with us. We can actually do ultrasound of the radio arteries in the office, either on your, I, uh, on your Samsung uh, Android phone or even just using the, the tablet, uh, which is what we have here. Uh, and then we went down, and I'll show you those images in a second. We put down this, so this is a six French 070 guiding catheter. This is 100 centimeters long. This is called the uh, Concierge Ultimate Shape by Merit. Uh, 100 centimeters is a good length in, in smaller patients, and you can see how we have a lot of length outside of the wrist here. We went about an inch higher than we normally would just in case, but we're well seated in the renal, as you'll see in a second. Uh, here's the, our Guardian device, and then through here we have our uh, 150 Scepter C microcatheter. Uh, this is a microvention catheter. It's made uh, for neuro application, uh, but this is a balloon tip microcatheter, which I think is a pretty uh, interesting concept, not only for this type of case, but also for liver-directed therapy as well. Um, so that's where we are right now. Let's show the fluoro feed. Came right down with this guide catheter. Some people would say that if you have a six French guide catheter, it may be challenging to navigate because there's a step off. We use an 035 wire here. Uh, wasn't an issue at all. Came right down. Again, remember, this is a six French guide catheter, not a diagnostic. So sometimes it can be a little challenging to navigate, but we didn't have any problems here. This is hooked up to a second side flush, so it's continuously running saline. We came down over just a standard Benson wire, and we puffed directly into the renal artery without a wire here. And you can see how it snuck in pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, and this was our first puff. And then we did this run. Popped out a little bit. She took a deep breath. Let's go to this one. All right. And so you can see the AML <coughs> at the bottom. There's a couple different feeders. It's not a very vascular one. It's, it's, it's smaller. Um, it's on the smaller side. Again, we could sort of debate whether something like this needs to be treated, but again, it's above four centimeters. And then we access a little further, and I'll show you where we are right now. We did an oblique, and we sort of determined while we were listening to Angela's talk uh, that it was coming off of one of those mid-branches, or so we thought. And so we have our microcatheter in this position. Um, this is an 014 200 centimeter fathom, which works really nicely with the scepter. You really need to use an 014 wire or smaller, which is pretty typical uh, in our lab. We have 014 and 016 wires that we use often. And uh, that's where we are. There's two, two points here. I think the ultimate is a great shape uh, because we use it for liver, we use it for kidney, et cetera. And you can see how nicely it cannulated. I mean, that was not an issue at all. But to have a large guide catheter, and again, we're not sure how we're going to embolize this, but my thought initially, and this is what we've been doing for most of these, is to use Onyx, uh, which is another reason why I got this microcatheter. Um, I like to be able to do runs around the, the microcatheter without taking the microcatheter out. I think it's a much more stable platform when you use liquid embolic. Uh, so right here I have a side flush. You guys can see that here. And so I can do runs with the microcatheter in. And it looks to me like you see two small feeders coming off of this trunk here. And it looks like it's feeding the majority of the, the AML. Um, so I think we could probably get it with just something off of this branch. We're going to do a run here, and then we're going to put the balloon up and see if it changes. Because a lot of times when we change this, uh, when we put the balloon up, it actually changes the, the flow a lot. And that'll probably determine how we do this. Yeah, we were just commenting that we don't see the one off to the side. Um, so uh, let's put that image up. Let's get the wire and, and see if you guys can get in a little bit further, and then we'll put the balloon up maybe distal to that other branch. 
you guys can see what we're dealing with here. This is a you know a small a small branch coming off. I don't I don't know that that branch is even big enough to accept a microcatheter. Uh, at least, not, and this is a pretty small one. This is a uh, a very elegant neuro microcatheter that tracks as well, if not better, than some of the peripheral versions of the catheters that we have. Um, but I don't know that we're going to be able to select that exact branch so much. And so I think the balloon may help uh, direct the flow into that AML, but we'll see. So take a look at this. I'm going to inflate the balloon. This only takes about, you know, 0.3 cc's, if that, to inflate. Um, and we're going to do that under fluoro and see if this will change the flow dynamic at all. You guys got the fluoro feed? Yeah. So I didn't put much in at all. Okay, breathe normally. Bring the balloon down. Yeah, we're going to bring the balloon down. Didn't really change the flow dynamics that much. And the, you know, the great thing about this catheter is that if you don't want to inflate the balloon, you don't have to. So we're going to take it down. See, maybe we'll advance it further. So you know, this is a, these are small little, uh, little arteries here. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure which one we're going to do. We have, uh, it looks like we have like these two feeders here. You can see that one's coming, coming off of right. the, the side over there, and then you have the other one that's coming down. Uh, ideally, you want to wait, you know, a few minutes for, for the onyx to sort of set up um, if you're using it with onyx, and that's, that's generally our application for this. So one thing that I was Small thinking concept. with this case is that if we can cannulate that one vessel there we, and we get the balloon inflated, we might be able to fill the entire thing with a tiny little injection of onyx and be done. This is 150, uh, which is another reason I like it. The, a lot of the balloon catheters, again, there's not that many available, but uh, this, is, this is the only one that I have that's a radial length currently. Gentle. We sold that five and one, we're not ready yet. That's okay. I think we're, we're good. Okay. Let's take that out. Brandon, you want to grab that wire? Yes. Right. It's not going any further than that, I'll tell you. So we selected it. You can see the whole AML filling there. That's great. Yeah. Did you need to inflate the balloon for that or no? Probably didn't, but you can see it's filling pretty nicely here. We're really zoomed in. It's starting. There we go. You guys see that with the balloon? Perfectly well. So that's what I was trying to do initially. That's what I really wanted to Some use more. the balloon for to immediately get the onyx to interdigitate into all these vessels. So now that we have that, we're going to put a little more in there. We're going to be done. So it's a quick, quick injection once you get it in place. Is sometimes it takes a little while with these small vessels. But I think slow? you know she's going to have very little pain after. Just go slow if it starts yeah. to reflux. It shouldn't reflux, but sometimes it will um, if you're not oh careful. And you can see a little bit sort of came back there. I don't know where that's going. Close, close it up. But we're probably done at this point. Very good. So it's a pretty quick injection, almost like glue.